Boxing truth here. I had to talk a little bit about Al Heyman and how he is pretty much the su- supposed promoter or advisor and manager, whatever you want to title this guy. But it's amazing how many boxing channels and boxing fans dick ride this guy so hard. And you just wonder where it comes from. I mean, any one of y'all watching this video, I mean, especially the box, some of the boxing channels. I mean, does this guy pay you to suck his dick so much? Because otherwise, you, just, you look like a fool with this amount of dick riding that you give out Heyman. Praying for him to monopolize boxing, praying for him to to get rid of the competition and pretty much change how boxing has operated for over the past century. This is not going to be about his trial, his win over Golden Boy. I mean, it wasn't really surprising the case was dismissed. I was surprised Golden Boy didn't really didn't settle with Heyman because before the verdict came down, I read everything what was going on. And it just didn't seem like a case Golden Boy could win. I mean, Bob Aaron was smart. He settled with Heyman, got him to waive his exclusive rights on the networks and his fighters. And he got a little little payout from it. And he was able to diminish some of Heyman's power as a result. So Bob Aaron was smart. He was able to get some a little cash flow coming in and... He diminished Heyman's power, and Golden Boy, the left with nothing, spent a whole bunch of money on lawyer fees, and then come away with nothing. It was a weak case, what they had, especially after, after Heyman waived his exclusivity clauses, especially after doing business with, with one of Heyman advised fighters. All it did was weaken the case of Golden Boy. But I just don't understand like where the dick riding comes from for, for Al Heyman. I mean, why are boxing fans rooting for a sole promoter or a sole manager or advisor. I mean, what's the fucking matter? Why are boxing fans rooting for just certain promoters? It's about the fighters. I don't care about all the promoters in the game. There's some promoters that make the sport interesting, no doubt. Bob Aaron makes the sport interesting. Eddie Hearn makes the sport interesting. Uh, Richard Schaefer makes the sport interesting. But those guys know what they know how to promote their fighters. They know how to create anticipation. They have their own style of doing things. Al Heyman, he doesn't talk to anybody. The only thing interesting about him is he's a mystery. He's a mystery in boxing. He's a mystery when it comes to his power. But now everything's all out there. We all know why he's been been able to have this power for so long. We all know why he has over 200 fighters under his stable. He treats his fighters good, no doubt. That's why no no fighter will go against them. Well, the fighters that are that are taken care of properly, that he really has on his high on his on his totem pole, that he he really wants to uh, take care of, but. With so many fighters, he can't make everybody happy. And some fighters have have spoken out against him. But the reason why I wasn't down with Heyman's plan with the PBC is because he was trying to monopolize the sport. I don't want boxing to be monopolized. Boxing has never been monopolized. That's why I love boxing. That's what makes boxing so much different compared to any other sport in America, especially in America. I don't want boxing to turn into a league. And that's what Heyman was trying to do. Turn it into a league to where boxing is only one entity. Boxing has never been like that. It's never been monopolized. And that's what makes the sport much more pure than other sports. Because it's a bunch of people doing business transactions with each other. A bunch of promoters, a bunch of managers. Different parties coming together to to a fight agreement. And that's why... I love co-promotions in boxing because you know you're going to get a real fight. Mikey Garcia, Dejan Slaktishning, that was a real fight. Kovalev Ward was a real fight. Too bad the judging was incompetent. Some of the best fights made in boxing have been co-promotions. 
because everything's on the line. When you just when you just have one entity controlling all the fighters, there's a lot of shit that that can really take the 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 value from from the fight. It could be easily be a fixed fight, or the fighters or the players can be shortchanged. Like look at the NBA, look at the NFL, look at the UFC. What do they all have in common? They're all one entity. They're all one league. And guess what? All the participants involved playing or fighting in, in, on the octagon, they're all being shortchanged. Who do you think is the lion's share in all those sports? It's the fucking owners. And I don't want boxing to become just one entity. Boxing is the only sport where the, where the, the fighter, the participant that actually puts the asses in the seats is getting the lion's share. Well, at least if he's smart enough to deal with the suits of the promoters in, in boxing. They're supposed to get the lion's share of all the revenue generated in fights. You can't say the same for the UFC, the NBA, the, the MLB, even though players are getting, especially in baseball, getting tremendously overpaid. But compared to what the owners are getting, they're getting peanuts. But where else are they going to go? They have nowhere else to go. Where are the UFC fighters going to go? There's no other competition. There's no other show in town. So they're going to take what they can get. And that's how the owners get away with it. They pretty much just shortchange these guys. And they get all the money when these guys are taking the, the kicks and punches in the octagon. How the fuck is it that Conor McGregor is averaging over a million pay-per-view buys, supposedly. And yet he's only getting guaranteed... He's only getting guaranteed... Guarantees of three million for his fights. Something wrong with that picture. That's why boxing is different from all other sports. It's never been under one entity. It's never been monopolized. And I don't want it to be, to be monopolized. I want it to be to stay the same. Yeah, sure, there could be improvements. But the way it's been run, it's been like this for over 100 years. Different promoters, different managers negotiating for fights. Promoters willing to roll the dice when it makes the most sense. And Heyman, people dick ride you, but it's pretty fucking sad, man. When you have over 200 fighters in your stable and you can't even convince none of these networks except one to give you license fees. And you had all this money, over $585 million in capital, to work with to finally bring boxing back to the masses. And you didn't do that. What have you accomplished with this PBC series? Only Spike TV, one network, is giving you license fees. And they somehow, you somehow convinced them to buy that trash that you gave them a few weeks back. With Lara defending his title in a showcase fight and Anthony Durrell in, in, in a bullshit fight. But it's pretty sad that you can't convince a lot of these networks to buy your product. You did try, I'll give you that. You you, you approached NBC and you, you was hoping for license fees, but they flat out turned you down. So then you came back with all this money. Spend spent millions of dollars of, of airtime to showcase your product. But you really didn't take advantage of it, man. Doesn't seem like none of these networks are interested in your product. Seems like ESPN just gave you a big fuck you after they just signed Golden Boy to an exclusive deal. And Golden Boy didn't have to pay him any money to get airtime. You could have made some better fights at the, at, on your time by series to really convince the networks to really believe in your product, to, to pay license fees. Instead of making Thurman Guerrero, you should have made Thurman Porter as the first telecast. You should have had some of your featherweight champions unifying in one of those telecasts. You should have had Adrian Broner in a big fight instead of showcase fights. You should have had Danny Garcia fight somebody real 
instead of fighting the Paul Imanagis and the Samuel Vargas's of the world. He should have put Deontay Wilde in the real fight, and maybe the ratings would have convinced the networks to actually buy your product. You still have some time. You've got a year left before the, the contracts expire. But I just wonder what you're going to do. You're putting all your good fights on Showtime. They're paying for the product. They're providing you those license fees. Now, the undercard for the next PBC card, I like I like the undercard. I like Jared Hurd is going to fight uh, Tony Harrison. It, it's pretty much expected who's going to win, but I, I'm interested to see. Ja- it's interesting to see that you're actually pushing one of your prospects harder than you ever did before. You're developing Jared Hurd a lot better than you've ever developed any other fighter that I can recall. You're putting your good fights on Showtime, but what's left for your your PBC time buys? Have you given up? Are you going to try to convince these suits at all these networks to buy your product? It's a good thing that you waived your exclusive rights to these networks so actually other promoters can pitch their product for them to buy. Or perhaps you can allow some of those so got those guys to fight on, on the remaining dates that you have. But just wanted to talk a little bit about Al. I don't hate the guy. Don't even know who he is. Just know what he looks like. I know his backstory. I know what got him into boxing. He's a smart guy. Controversial guy. Know some of his personal details as well, which I'm not going to get into. Everybody has their vices. But at the same time, you have all these fighters, but yet none of, none of them are banking on that pay-per-view level none of them are even close to becoming a pay-per-view star i like that you got thurman garcia on free tv but we all know why that's on that's not on on pay-per-view because that fight won't even do more than kovalev war pay-per-view numbers that's another issue you got man who's gonna be your next star you're protecting wilder as long as you can until you'll you'll cash him out in a big fight. In a fight that he's most likely going to lose. So you're going to try to avoid that mandatory. Whenever the WC can set it up. Other fighters in your stable. Keith Thurman. Is a guy you really could. Push into. Bigger stardom. He's got. He's got some. Some. Some tools about him that can make him a bigger star. Is he a great fighter? That remains to be seen. He's still a young guy. Maybe he can improve. But he's got the the personality. He's got the, the some charisma to perhaps be a bigger star than he is. I don't see that with Danny Garcia. Adrian Broner. That's another guy he really could have pushed into a bigger star. But he wasn't good enough. He couldn't pass the tests. My Donna test. So you have to look other elsewhere for who's gonna be your guy. Floyd Mayweather's retired, and all he think he's all he's thinking about is a cherry pick fight with Conor McGregor. And another thing, it makes me wonder what your relationship is like with Richard Schaefer. I really wish one reporter would ask Richard Schaefer at, at all these Heyman advised events. So. I really wish one reporter would just ask Schaefer, so what's in it for you? You're promoting these events, right? But you don't promote none of these fighters. None of these fighters have promotional agreements to you. So what's in it for you, Richard? Why are you putting on events where none of these guys are actually signed to you? Go look on his site. He's got none, none of these guys are signed to him. He's still developing his stable. He's got an interesting deal with David Hay. But other than that, he's really got no no marquee fighters on his list. 
I mean, what is that alliance about? What I mean, what is that heading? What are you two up to? But we'll see how how Heyman deals with his his time buys for the rest of the year. There's still gonna be there's still fight dates remaining on ESPN. Fights coming up on Fox, supposedly NBC. Uh, well, the network he got, but he's only got one network paying license fee, and that's Spike TV. But if you can get other networks to pay for your product, man, then you're really doing something good for the sport. You're getting the the networks that have long not have been interested in the boxing actually pay for your product and actually pay for your fights because that's the end goal here. It's not about buying time. It's about getting paid for these fights. And are you making any money? Have you made any money from this PBC venture? Doubt it, man. You've lost hundreds of millions of dollars. That doesn't seem like it will be even be retrievable. But I'm going to end this video right here. We'll see if Heyman will finally take risks with other promoters, put his A-sides with his other A-sides. Will he put on better fights on his time by networks? And will he finally create another star in his largely vast but lacking superstars in the stable. This is Boxing Truth. I'm out.